Hello. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Amazing. Brilliant. Hello and welcome to Town at Eastbourne's hashtag makeshift studio live making workshop. Um, my name is Amy and today we're going to explore the action of spinning in the second of four artist led activities taking place this May. Hello to everyone coming in. Hello. The first uh, the first sessions recording on squashing play-doh which was last week um, can be found on this Instagram account uh, Town at Eastbourne's Facebook and website <laughs> um, these workshops are part of makeshift studio a project on Instagram and you might have seen it on this account um, on the feed already uh, and maybe taken part in it which is great um, it's a simple making challenge set by the Tana team each week using basic objects and materials found in the home. This week's prompt was dangle and sway. So tying in with that um, theme is our wind chime mobile making activity today. Hello, you've just joined us. Um, a little reminder, uh, everyone is welcome to take part. Uh, but please, if you're a child, um, ask an adult to work with you. Um, ask permission if you're borrowing objects and items around the home. Um, and if you're choosing extra materials that aren't detailed on the materials list that's gone out, um, which you will be for our wind chime making um, session today, uh, please don't use any sharp, precious or breakable uh, items. Great. Hello for joining us. Great, so hopefully you'll have had a little look at the materials list, um, but don't worry at all if you haven't. I'll go through them now. Um, so feel free to take this time to gather the things that you need. Um, or if you haven't, if you have got everything already, you can just check. Um, or if you think of something new, you can definitely um, collect that whilst I go through the list. So. To make our wind chime mobiles, we are going to need a tin can, so it should be empty and clean, ready to use, or a coat hanger. So tin can or coat hanger. So this can be wire or it can be uh, plastic. We're also going to need some elastic bands. I've just got a couple here. We're going to need some tape. So I've just got electrical tape, but masking tape and other tape works just as well. We are going to need some pegs. These can be wooden or plastic. Um, and we're also going to need some string. So on the hashtag makeshift studio um, rations list, I know shoelaces were part of it. So you could use shoelaces, you could use bits of yarn or ribbon, you could use some of this like plasticky stuff um, that you get on presents. So any, or scraps of fabric even, so anything you find lying around the home, sort of the scrappier the better. We are going to need a pair of scissors and we are going to need, optional, but if you'd like, you could always use some shiny materials. So I've got some mirror card, I've also got some tin foil from the kitchen, makes quite a nice noise. And I've got some old, like wrapping up paper from a present. So, 
shiny materials and textures are really welcome. Also found a sequin you could use. The last things we are going to need are um, objects that make noises. So these can be anything really. Um, it might take a little bit of time gathering these things um, and I found that you might have to be a bit of a magpie when you find these objects because they tend to be quite small. Um, again, if you're a child, please make sure you ask permission and it's important not to choose anything breakable uh, like made out of glass or ceramic. Um, as tempting as it is, because they make really nice noises when you tap them together as objects. Um, but we've got to make sure that it's safe and the objects won't shatter. So, some examples of things that I found. And you might find similar things in your home, or they might be completely different. But I'll just show you a few things that I found for our wind chime mobiles. Um, a tea strainer. Some ping pong balls, some milk bottle caps. Oh, another peg. Uh, the top of a little tin, a chopstick. Um, I've got a few bits of stationery as well. So, got a little highlighter and some crayons so they're just sort of little objects that you might find around the home um, and you might have to go on a little bit of a hunt to find them because some they tend to be quite small um, so bearing that in mind about things like tapping together um, it's wise I think to stick to plastic or wood or tin if you can so no breakable things would be great I've also got quite a few bits of stationery so it's just sort of maybe re-looking at things you might have around your home in a different way. So a few um, paper clips, nearly forgot the word for them, um, and like a, a little bulldog clip. So, um, great, hello if you're just joining us. So, um, I guess it's one of those activities you're very welcome to make along today if you've gathered you only really need a couple of objects and your main materials of the tin can, your coat hanger and your elastic tape and string. But if you want to spend a bit more time finding um, your other objects that make noises you're very welcome to watch uh, the Instagram live video today, uh, take your time, watch it again or follow the making guide which will be up on town eastbourne's website and you can you know do this activity whenever it's clever for you or you can make along with us um great so um i think i'll get started with the first step if everyone's ready wood paintbrush yes paintbrushes are excellent ideas yeah because often they have the little hole at the top so one of the comments um, has said maybe a wood wooden paintbrush if you're um, watching this on the non live version but yeah so whatever you can find really okay so the first step if you're using a coat hanger um, you have the option of bending it into another shape if you'd like to um, so this can be a little bit tricky um, so if you're a child you might want to ask an adult to help you, but you can bend it into maybe a circle or a kind of blobby, squiggly shape, um, and you can kind of test the wire and the materials to see what kind of effects you can make. Um, I'll show you one I made earlier. This took me quite some time, but I managed to bend it into a sort of circular shape. Um, we've got another comment that says garden wire. Yeah, if it if it works for you and if it's not sharp, I, I guess with wire, the ends might be a bit tricky, but definitely. It's good, I can tell people are getting really inventive with the things that they're finding around their home, so that's brilliant. Um, yes, and feel free to use the comments section if you've got any, um, any other questions or queries. Or if you just want to share what you're using, that'd be great. So options are, if you've got the coat hanger, and if you've got a wire one, you can bend it into another shape, like a circle or a 
whatever you want really. Um, if you'd rather not and you want to reuse your coat hanger after this workshop that's totally fine. Keep it as it is, I'd like to reuse mine. Um, but this might be a nice, nice opportunity for you to decorate it with a little bit of yarn. So you could wrap the yarn around it. You could braid it, you could wrap it, you get different colours on the go. If you've got a plastic one, they're especially nice for wrapping. And then you can just tie a knot at the end. Cool. So those are your options if you, you are using a coat hanger. If you are using a tin can, um, safety first, tin cans, they tend to have a really, really sharp edge around the inside. Um, so I guess, the same with that one, I guess what's really important is that you ask your adult if you're a child, you're working with an adult, you just have a look and see if there are any sharp, sort of scrappy bits of metal left over make sure those are removed safely and then you'll still have a ridge which is fairly sharp and we just don't want to get our fingers caught on it so I'm going to use my tape if you've done this already because I think it was mentioned on the instructions um, that's cool you can just watch I'm going to get my tape and I'm going to put it halfway across the tin can and wrap it round I guess I'm using electrical tape because it's got that sort of stretch but masking tape or paper tape or craft tape I haven't used sellotape actually but I guess it works just the same and you're very very carefully going to fold this over making sure that you don't really touch so it's the tape that's touching the sharp bit Ooh, another comment says we are using beads which is excellent I don't have any beads I'm very very jealous they're gonna make a lovely noise so if you're using a tin can you've got the edge covered which is good and it's also good to have um, that bit of tape around the edge just to remind you um, that you don't want to be catching your fingers on it okay the second part if you're using a tin can is to wrap an elastic band from the top to the bottom so you've got one going this way, cutting across the middle, and then with another elastic band, again from top to bottom. So you've kind of got a cross shape at the top. If you've got more than one elastic band, great, you can go for it. You can maybe make a star shape from top to bottom. You've got loads and loads, you can make an asterisk shape or like a little web pattern at the top. So, if you're using a tin can, that's just how we're going to prepare it. And if you are using a coat hanger, you're either decorating it or you're good to go. If you don't want to do that stage. Great. Hello, if you're just joining us. Um, great. Can I get maybe a thumbs up if anyone's making along um, to see if those two steps have been done and you're all right with them? The next step we're going to do, brilliant, thank you. The next step we're going to do is we are going to cut lengths of ribbon. So it could be your ribbon or your yarn or your shoelaces or your scrap bits of fabric, whatever you've got. Oh, brilliant, wrapping your coat hanger in wool. Sounds like a really brilliant move. So if you're waiting, if you're still on these stages with your coat hanging in your tin can, that's great, you can keep on going. Um, if you are ready to move on, brilliant. With your bits of ribbon, you can cut them using your scissors into lengths of around, it's totally up to you actually how long you want them to be, but I've been cutting them to around maybe 20 centimetres long, I think that's around 20 centimetres long not entirely sure um, or you could have some really short ones it's quite nice to have an assortment of lengths 
I'm just going to cut a couple as an example. This is quite a long bit of ribbon, so I think I'll just leave it whole. If you want to reuse your bits afterwards, you can just double it up. So I would say it's up to you how many objects you've got and up to you how many you want to make and add to your wind chime. Um, but maybe just a couple of lengths, so maybe just four or five lengths of ribbon or yarn. So once we've got those ready, and you can always cut more if you want, um, we're gonna have we're gonna turn our attention to our objects now. So on the comments, I've um, spotted that lots of you have been. Um, posting what objects you found that make noises and you'd like to add to your wind chime mobile which is excellent. Um, I think a really good thing to do at this point or when you're ready is to just test out the noises that some of these objects might make against each other. So you get a sort of range of noises. What does it sound like when maybe your keys tap against something that's made out of metal or wood or plastic or even wax, we've got a wax crayon. Brilliant. And some of these noises might be quite subtle as well. It's not necessarily sort of the loudest noise, which is quite nice. Quite good. Ah, so we've got a comment saying, I'm a child, so I may need help from you. Brilliant, so do you, is there anything specific that you'd like help with? We're just testing what noises they're making. So we're just having a moment and we're just playing with our objects. Um, small bells definitely, definitely work. One of the other comments, brilliant. If you have any questions, please feel free like um, to use the comment section. Um, or if you need help on a specific thing, let us know. So I quite like the sound of this stone with a hole in it and this tea strainer. So using one of my lengths of yarn or string or whatever you've got, I'm going to just attach it by doing a double knot. So you might have to have a really good look at your object and see what the best way of attaching it is with string. And it's always a good idea to do a double knot, even though it's a bit fiddly. So if you need a hand from an adult, please do ask them. A double knot so it doesn't fall off. And then this object has a hole, so we're just going to feed it through. So it's quite a nice idea when you're happy with which objects pair up with each other that you kind of arrange them so every object has a pair. If your object doesn't have an easy way to attach itself to a bit of string, like a hole or a hook or anything, don't worry at all. You can always tape them together using your tape and your string. So these are two tin cans. Or you could, I'll show you a little example. You could get an elastic band and you could just wrap it around the end, making a crisscross pattern. And then you can get one end of your string and loop it through the hole and then again do your double knot. Then 
And on the other end, I think I'll attach this bulldog clip and do a double knot as well. So as your objects dangle and sway, they can make noises. So you can test them out as you go along. Um, and I'll just show you a few more that I made earlier. So you can attach more than one object to the end. It's quite a long one. You can mix it up. So I've got a key and a hair bubble here. Makes a really quiet noise. And for this one, I've combined um, like a ping pong ball and an elastic band. So different ways of joining objects. So we've got a comment that says, can I use a straw? Definitely. I think anything goes as long as it makes a little noise and most objects will make a little noise when taps against another. So it's really just all about playing, playing with your objects, seeing what they do, seeing how they react. Cool. So the next thing you're going to do, your next option, if you're using a tin can, I think it's quite a nice idea to use the elastic bands that you attached earlier and you can thread your objects through. If this is a little bit tricky, do you ask an adult or there's always the option of pinching your string in the middle of the objects and just tying a knot. At this point it might be quite good. If you've only got one pair of hands, um, you can tie another string or a bit of ribbon at the top. Make a loop with a double knot and hang it from somewhere so you've got both of your hands free to attach. Um, if you've got a friend who can hold it for you, that's brilliant. Or if you can just pop it on a shelf and try and work that way. Um, and we've got another question that says, how do you do it with a ball? So I guess it's up to you. With this, the ping pong ball, I've just wrapped two little elastic bands, if you have them, around it. And then attached another elastic band, sort of like an extended loop. But it works just as well using a bit of tape and taping your string to the ball. So whatever works best of you. If you've got other um, balls, I've only got ping pong balls, but if you've got other like maybe bouncy balls and things that make noises, um, yeah, share with us in the comments. Cool. If you have got a coat hanger in any shape or any material, it's just a case, it might be a little bit easier just to attach and just to wrap your objects around. So I've got my key and my hair bubble. And using a hanger is a little bit easier than the can. There we go. Just knotted it. Knotted it round. And play around. It might take a little bit of time adjusting. Adjusting the lengths of things. Because um, ideally you want your objects to be able sort of bounce into each other and dangle and sway and spin. Cool. So, I guess the one thing that we haven't used so far is our shiny paper. So you can use this like simply as a decorative thing that reflects the light. So you can cut different sections out of it. I'll show you an example. So you can cut different sections out of your tin foil, so when it spins it reflects the light. Or um, if you've got tin foil, you can scrunch it up, it makes a tiny, tiny noise. Um, so again, with your shiny reflective paper, have a play around. And I'll also show you an example of 
a tin can. So I just played around with the different lengths and as it spins and sways, they make different noises. Great. If you've sort of manipulated your wire hanger, you've got loads of opportunity to do hanging objects in the middle of it, which is really exciting. Um, I guess the nicest thing about a wind chime is that it's not really about like making the loudest noise possible. Sometimes it's really nice to have that subtle effect. Um, so once you're happy with what you made, um, and feel free to carry on the activity after this workshop, once you're happy with it, uh, just some things to think about. So where is the windiest spot in your house and where could it live? Um, you could try, if you've got both hangers and tin cans, you could try combining them, maybe putting them at different angles so they spin in a different way. Um, you could always swap the objects around. So the other day I realised that I'd accidentally put my home keys on my mobile, so I definitely had to take them out to get out of the house. But also, you know, it's quite nice. You've made this object, so it's up to you how you remake it or reimagine it or reinvent it or unmake it if you want. Um, you can always use, uh, I know, a hairdryer or a balloon pump. Um, they're both items that are on the hashtag makeshift studio materials ration list um, so they could also you could also play around with creating your own wind or different ways of activating this mobile um, I'm sure you have loads and loads of ideas as well so it'd be great great to hear them so how's everyone doing if you put a thumbs up if you're still making, I think I'll make a long, maybe I'll try and finish this one a little bit. Are you going to take <laughs> We've got a really lovely comment saying that um, Willow is going to take hers for a walk, which is really nice. They're quite, sort of, they're mobile in two ways, so they move by themselves, but you can also take them on a walk and move them. Brilliant. Great, we'd love to hear, what, everyone's um, mobiles are going to be so unique because it all depends on what kind of things you can find around your home. So we'd love to hear about your creations and we'd love to see images of them. Um, I'll be sharing what I get up to with my wind chimes, um, where they live and what noises they make and how they move. So feel free to share comments and outcomes with us, um, tagging us at Hello Towner and using the hashtag makeshift studio. Um, remember, if you're sharing photos of anyone else, please do ask them first. We've got some lovely comments um, coming through. So we've got one saying that you've used an old shelf bracket from the back of a drawer, which is so inventive, I love it. Um, we've also got another comment saying, how do you make Play-Doh, which uh, we covered last week in our squashing um, workshop. So those um, videos and making guides are on this Instagram feed. They're on Town Eastbourne's Facebook and they're on um, the website as well. So you should be able to find them definitely. Um, the next makeshift studio is next Thursday the 21st at 2 p.m. and we will explore floating, which will be really, really exciting. Um, and you're all really welcome to come along to it. The materials list for um, next week's workshop will be posted on Tuesday on Instagram. Um, don't worry at all if you'd like to come but you can't make it because again, all the recorded workshops will be available the following day and the making guides will be up um, on the website. So you can access the activities in your own time whenever it's clever. Great, does anyone have any um, comments? before I leave you to work on your mobiles. Is everyone good? Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. Oh. Bye.